So when are you having Trump on? I don't know. Okay. You, you're, the look, I don't know. Maybe. Looks like you got... I've had the opportunity to have him on my show more than once. I've said no every time. I don't want to help him. I think you can revitalize and rehabilitate someone's image in a way that is pretty shocking. Look at the way people look at Alex Jones now. Because Alex Jones has been on my podcast a few times. So when are you having Trump on? The look I don't know. Maybe. Looks like you guys, it's not like I'm, you know, uh, lobbying for it. But I think if, this, I said, first of all, 15 years, you know, apprentice, good luck, go to, no, he had great producers. I don't care if you have the greatest producers in the world. 15 years. Book, how many years does Art of the Deal does? Do? Well, yeah, but Pat, imagine if you started with $430 million. I'm willing to make the case that you are more likely to screw up your life if your family gives you money. Right. Okay. So let's just say he did get the money and he still doesn't do drugs and he doesn't do alcohol and his vice is women, whatever angles you choose to take. Right. Okay. It's your show. You, you get to take whatever angles you want to take. I think it'd be very weird to look back. There's going to be no mainstream media 20 years from now. You know that. I know that. To look back and say, Joe never interviewed Trump. That's kind of weird. I, I would say if you don't do the podcast with him, you're helping the establishment and you're helping a guy named Joseph Biden. I think you're helping that person. <laughs> That's kind of weird. Mm. But indirectly in your mind, you're helping Joseph Biden win. No one's here with a motive. The motive is, as a friend, as a guy that's in the same space as you, and you're the Michael, you're the Brady of the space, I'm encouraging Michael and Brady to consider this. That's it. Okay, yeah. I'll consider it. Yeah. I, if you, I love if, you. No, I don't want you to think, I don't want you to think there is a motive in no, something that this I person wants think, from you. Yeah. I don't think that. You know, apprentice. Trump. It's harder to deal does so when you have a Trump on. I think that uh, it's Wild West comedy happening in Austin, which is, you know, obviously what people want. You know, people go to a strip club, you don't want to see, you know, a girl in a bikini. No. You want to see fucking. So I, I want to hear the N word. You're damn right. Yeah. I see some buttholes. Yeah, I want to see, yeah. Some misplaced, ingrown hairs some and things like that. Yeah, I want to yeah. see it all. Mm -hmm. When you shoot and you release an arrow, it's got all this force coming off of that string. Right? And that's what's causing it to wiggle. Like as the knock releases and then the arrow releases from the bow, it's going to wiggle. Hunting is this intense... It's very spiritual in a way. Mm. I mean, people don't get it because they see you celebrating when it's over because it's very, very, very difficult to close in on a wild animal. What are you hunting? Mostly elk. Well, elk's my favorite for two reasons. One, it's very delicious, super nutritious. Also, if I shoot one elk, I can eat it for like eight months. Now, the thing is with me, I see that elk there and yeah. I sort of feel... Like a sort of, I've watched too much Disney. Yeah. Um. You know, like I see that elk, and I feel like I'm Bambi, literally. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, like I don't have it, it. Like, is that early in the morning? You look. Yeah. Tired. Not tired. Might you know. be late afternoon, actually. Can I, you I tell? I think it was late afternoon. Yeah. Like say, so, like so. What in your head when you're doing it, when you're pulling the trigger, you're not having. What's going on in your mind? Well. You, you only are hunting these mature animals that have already passed on their genes. You also are recognizing that if you're not killing these things, they're not, it's not like they're going to live forever. They, right. they, are, they live a short life, a short life with a very violent death. It's either wolves or mountain lions or bears or something's going to take them out. Yeah. Joe. The statistic, traditionalists, 0.8% mm. are gay. Boomers, 
Then it goes to five point something. Then it goes 10%. Is it really 10%? Oh, yeah. Gen Z's right now is 21%. How much of them are regretful? 21% of Gen Z right now was gay. Identified. Is it gay or LBGTQ? L all that stuff. Because all you, the can, you can be non-binary and slip right in there with like a, a real joke. fucking loophole. I think, I think we're, uh, I think it's a, um, I think it's a big mistake. And I think we're going to pay a price for it. Uh, uh, and it's going to take us a decade or two to see the results of this. I think so too. And I think there's going to be a self-correcting thing. Um, the idea about I don't want to help him has to be replaced, in my opinion. You're not helping him. You're helping America. If the idea is you don't want to help America, I think, Joe, you want to help America. Joe, Joe is a, a very a, a interesting individual with a high self-awareness and a level of comfort of being wrong and a level of convic conviction in areas where he is certain that he's right. And you know, th this is this is a guy that if there's a guy that, uh, you know, would be able to, you know, interview, would be able to change his position and be open to the idea, it's Joe. Huge fan of Bobby Lee. He should be on yes. this podcast. I love Bobby Lee. I saw he was on your show. <sighs> what do you talk to Joe about? First of all, we're both grapplers, so we talk a lot about jujitsu. We talk a lot about. I'm a grappler. Are you? I was on the wrestling team in high school. Yeah, I know. I know this. Is I, that I, a grappler? That to you, that if I don't know jujitsu, is, is there only one kind of grappling that you like? Yeah, there's levels to this game, I think. Oh. I just talked that. No, 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 there's nothing more. <laughs> yeah. There's no, that's a surprising fact that you've dropped that. It almost feels like a lie. Because you've said that before that you were a wrestler in, yeah, yeah. in high school. It doesn't make sense. Well, it's funny that you say that yeah. because, and I'm going to cause a little controversy here. Yeah. Right? But Joe Rogan yes. one time came to me when he lived in LA, this is years ago, and he said, You're a liar. Yeah. You've never grappled. Yeah. And I go, yes, I did. You're a fucking liar. No, you didn't. And at that time, I didn't have any photos to prove it. But if you look at my Instagram, I have photos. If he said, hey, are you available Thursday, this day, fly out, do my podcast, I would 100% do it. And that hasn't happened yet. So interesting. Yeah. Is, I, is, By the way, Bobby Lee's been invited to do my podcast yeah, multiple he's, times. He's, Multiple times. Well, you should you should get him on. I'm gonna you have to should... reach out to him. Yeah, I feel like he even... is so. I might have to fly to LA and hold his hand and drag no, no. him on a flight. I think... <sighs> he just needs a real invitation. <sighs> He's been doing the same material for so long. But there's also a natural uniqueness to his comedy. Bobby Lee is, uh, he's a unique case. Yeah, so definitely, it would be an amazing uh, podcast to have with him to, to be on your show, but. He was yeah. great on yours. Yeah. I've known Bobby Lee for 20 plus years. Yeah. He's never put out a comedy special. I couldn't get enough of it. That was like my, that was my. That was my like thing. I switched from like police interrogation videos to like following the <laughs> yeah. Shab and Bobby Lee thing for a while. It's a, my YouTube algorithms just filled with Bobby Lee, Brendan Shab, Kalila. Um. On March 3rd, you text Bobby asking if he's handled the quote-unquote Kalila shit yet because you're still getting negative comments. Mm -hmm. In this text chain, you said, I don't want to have to get nasty with her, but if I have no choice, 
this is all direct quotes, I can deaf play that game. And this was referring to the months that Bobby and I were in an open relationship, thinking that that was somehow going to directly hurt me. You think you have a one over me? I fucking dare you, motherfucker. <laughs> I dare you. Let it out of your chest because that is actually not a real threat. You think you're threatening me, but it's kind of that information's already out there, you little bitch. Yeah, I, I, obviously, obviously, I mean, it's like, you know, the open relationship, you and I, we, we were, that's not for the, was for the, we even for talked about it, it's not for the public consumption, right? Because it was delicate. It was a delicate thing. He was right? also we're, we're going back on different. drugs. There's so many different. There's things. so many different elements, elements to it. Elements to it, right? It was a dark time. It was very fragile. The information I got that open relationship, uh, that's not a. It's not like anybody did a crime. That that's not really breaking news. I can't hold that over your head. The other information you gave me was is is the the bad one. which I don't want to get into. Okay. Okay. That I don't want to bring up. That's Wait. not fair to you guys or, or anybody. Well, we can get into that. Wait, what is that other thing? Yeah, we can get into that. The other Wait, hold on. Let me let me okay. actually yeah. probably let me, let's assume that it's the same old narrative of me being a gold digger and stealing money from Bobby. I mean, is we, it within we, those lines? We talked about it. Yeah, you and so, I had spoke about this, and you told me. The oh truth. yes, I mean let's yes. let's be real. That is an old tired story. Bobby, call your accountants. Mm. What was said was that there was a guy, he was unfunny. I came back with, oh, that's a big clue. And then... But my thing with that guy, do you think that's nice? Oh, no. Mm. But I didn't say your name. But it's it's hang on one second, Brendan. Let me tell let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. If we're having this discussion about something that happened in the past and we're having a giggly little girl talk, mm -hmm. where is the crime in that? There's no crime. You can do whatever you want. Right. I have no issue with that. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, no issue with it. All right. I'm 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 just saying is I've that is that nice? That's all. I have gone to you and said, if I could go back, if I had known that a tiny little giggly girl talk was going to spiral into this, I would have wired my mouth shut. But in my heart of hearts, while you may think it's not nice, and now I admit, not the nicest thing to say, it was just an anecdote. Sure. So that was I didn't think much of it uh -huh. on saying that because hitting on someone it's just simply not a cancelable offense. That was my justification for it. Who the fuck cares who hits on who seven years ago? I had fake tits then, they were shiny, you <laughs> liked them, you DM'd me, you said sorry, fuck it. Like, I know. Weird, I'm, cause I can't. I There's just, some, sometimes I'm on one thing and then sometimes I'm like, maybe they did do that. <laughs> like It like switches quickly. It's like if you're talking to, you know, you're, gun-toting friend and uh, then all of a sudden you're with your liberal well if there were no guns and this and that and you're like sometimes you can see both sides of the argument oh, yeah. I'm like well I mean Brendan you know you some you know hate happens to people people are jealous you know you're a fighter turned comedian and then all of a sudden I saw one clip where Kalila's like yeah I'm a lot better at the internet than people think and I'll destroy someone it's like from an episode years earlier and like I'm like whoa what I would guess the dialogue is behind the scenes is a lot of those guys don't like me, like the Joe Rogan and all those guys. Like Brendan said, uh, mutual friends of mine say that he's just a drama, he just causes drama and that's what he does. 
So I think they're probably like, Bobby went on this drama podcast and started all this shit. And someone like Joe Rogan would be like, it's so trashy that he went on there and aired the dirty laundry. But that's what it is, right? It's a boys club. It's all fucking toxic shit show. The reality is none of it really matters. It does not. Nothing it, matters. This is not going. They have zero power over your career. Absolutely they, zero. They have minus power. Because they're using you to try to control what, right. what Kalila's doing. Right, right. He didn't just tell us about the Reddit thing. He was telling Rogan. He was telling Whitney. He I would believe telling... that. Oh, it seems insane. Who knows? But yeah, I'm just but saying, he's saying like, he's telling people shit. He's telling other people that this is what you did. This is what our company did. And that is to me That's like. That's nuts. You know, it's like a fucking soap show. It, it, they want yeah. this drama. There's no drama. Like Bobby Lee is one of my closest friends. I me and Bobby talk a lot. No one's been more supportive when I started than Bobby Lee, dude. They, they said that you had like some dirt on her or something like I, that. I, like, I have no dirt. I, I don't know. So like, where, me and her make, don't know each other that well. They're making this up or what? Yeah, but when it comes to Kalila, it's like, I don't know. Again, I don't, I don't subscribe to social media. So if she's getting that news yeah. and she subscribes to it, I would be upset too. And that's why I told her. See, this, I'm like, I yeah. get it. So I mean, you know, some stuff you don't have to tell the public. What a, there's such a world now with podcasting. There's also like this soap opera undercurrent yeah. of all of it, you yeah. know? I don't play it. You, you would think Kill Tony would be a big poker and like, I get it. People like drama, but I don't want, I, I've always looked at it like if you play that game, those are the types of fans you're going to get. Ethan Klein show does yeah. that a lot. Yeah. I noticed they get a lot more like, but it's, it, he's, he does a great show. Yeah. <clears throat> and Ethan's a. You know, we've had some great conversations, man. He's an extremely deep guy. Um, there's, there's just so much podcasting. It's, it's really its own. It's its own. I mean, it's a huge world now. Yeah. With layers and like, there's like, people making like, vi like, reviewing po like reviewing clips and things that have happened. It's, it's gotten pretty deep, man. Oh um, yeah. There's people reviewing those people's yeah. review shows and stealing their ideas and doing ripoffs of their shows and like you know what i mean like it's like they're reviewing the review i used to go every night and shoplift two steaks i would buy salami and i would just take two t-bone steaks and put them in my winter jacket i cut the salami and cut lettuce and put salami tomatoes and lettuce and i'd make like a genoa salad with vinegar and oil and we'd just make fucking t-bone steaks I'd steal those nice tea, like those ten dollar tea bones. <laughs> Back in the day, a ten dollar tea bone that was big time. I was a one man fucking wrecking crew, and I loved it. I think it was the last time I was on. We were talking about defunding the police. Yeah. And and you you, you talk to police, and it's gnarly right yeah. now. It's Letting criminals out of prison, not locking anyone up. You can't. I mean, in San Francisco, what do they? Yeah. You can't get. You can't get arrested if you steal less than nine hundred dollars <laughs> worth of shit from the store. His name came up a lot, Rogan. Yeah. You know what I mean? As a threat, like we're gonna go to Rogan. Daddy and Rogan. Dare you, right? Stupid asshole. And so when they use I'm him, sorry, that's especially ridiculous. because I obviously love him. Yeah, Joe and I um I don't have any issues with him and yeah. we, in fact I just saw him three weeks ago. We, it's, I love him. We Good. hug and we talk and he's just been so supportive of me, Joe. But when they use him right um as a threat, it's kind of like because he has such a big audience, right? And it's like I don't know what you, you know. You think Joe is that stupid though that people can tell him, "Yo, you're not gonna have Bobby on." Right? I don't think Joe. You think he got yeah, no, to no, where Joe's he got because he that. would listen to stuff but, like that? But the fact yeah. that they go there, the you fact know, that like they it. go there says a lot about them. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about Joe. You don't have to care about any of those fucking guys. Yeah, you don't care about shit because the job is gonna come. The fans are there. People are gonna buy tickets to your shows because you're fucking Bobby Lee. Yeah, and you're already a legend. Yeah, you've already, uh, you're already built yourself you don't have to care about anything anymore i don't do well with ptsd and trauma you well, have a lot of it which is fucked up because that's kind of you're not you don't hide that you're open about a lot of the stuff you've been through and especially considering all that it's even more fucked up the way they came at you like that it's just it's just fucked it's and just that's wrong. why people like it's him do up, that yeah. right because not a lot of people will stand up and or wanna 
even go there. You know, a lot. It, it, nobody wants to go through that. So he's doing it to silence you. And there is also and something very slanderous happening. You, you were just allowed to steal, I guess, up to $1,000 worth of stuff, which it's almost impossible to steal over $1,000 worth of stuff, you know, in one trip at least. Yeah, in one trip, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, people are out there being wild. Not everybody's, not everybody's thriving in these times. So, like, I mean, you have to ask yourself, what would we be doing? You know what I mean? If we had nothing and needed uh, something. Same we'd, thing. Yep, exactly. We'd be in there. So people were just walking in the store stealing shit. Well, there was a time that I could sit here for hours with you. Talk, I'm out on bail. And I'm fucking out on bail, kidnapping. Out on bail for second degree kidnapping, second degree assault, you know. I'm, I got the works thrown at me. And I'm fucking going into Sears every day and clipping 10 Bruce Springsteen double set CDs born in the USA. They're going for $80, whatever they were going for. $40, I'm getting 22 a piece. I'm taking two a day, I'm walking with the small 220. I got 100 for Coke, 50 for weed, and 50 for lunch. That was it. That I wasn't gonna work when I'm hot on bail. I'm just gonna go to see his Roebuck every day and rob Born by the USA. They even had him right by the door. I didn't even have to do much work. And then on the way out, I just take a, four of them, put them in my shirt and walk out. One day, Joe Rogan, I pick up like 10 of them, because instead of four, why am I going to take four? It's like the guy says in Narco, you're going to move a kilo? You might as well move two. You're going to move two? You might as well move five. You're going to move five? You might as well do 10. What's the difference? So instead of taking four boxes, I started taking like 10s. Like I would walk out of there, Joe Rogan, like a CD fucking thing. And one day I walk out and I hear a guy go, hey, you, stop right there. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, come back with those CDs. They're chasing me in Boulder. Mm -hmm. In the parking lot of Crossroads Mall, here I am getting chased. One security guard in the car and the other guy on foot. I could beat them both up, by the way. <laughs> like, I could beat them, fuck oh, both of them. But I just can't have no problems. And I run up to the top of the road as I'm about to hit 28th Street, Boulder police is coming right at me. And I had to stop and give him a fake name and fucking, you know, here I am out on fucking bail. Were you addicted to it, to the thrill? I was addicted to snorting coke and getting my dick sucked. But do you think there was a little bit of an addiction to the thrill of stealing, too? Oh, I loved all that shit. Because you loved all that, doing that shit later on with like lighters and shit. Oh, I love all that shit. <laughs> if I'm not in trouble for something, <laughs> One night I was staying at that hotel and I was hungry. One afternoon and I crossed the street to the gas station because that's how much money I had. And I saw a for help sign. And I asked the guy, what, what are you looking for? And he goes, I need to marry a pump gas from 4 to 12. I go, okay, okay. I see you at 4 o'clock. So I come back and I realize I'm by myself. So he trains me for the first hour. And he told me, he goes, it's night, light, night time, so drop. Every time you got 500 in your pocket, put an envelope, put what time, sign this paperwork, and put a drop in there. I didn't, I didn't see the reason to, you know? So every hour, like he told me, I'd take like a dollar bill and drop it. Because for some reason, it was like computerized. He goes, I'll find that in my house if you don't drop. So about fucking two o'clock, I realized I got about $1,200. Plus what's ever in the register, plus the food, Plus, he's got a box of change under the fucking register. So I took everything. Hershey bars, <laughs> the whole fucking thing. And I just walked across Route 4, jumped over the fucking banister <laughs> in the side of it. Cars were whizzing by me doing 90. And I went home. Oh, I did shit. this every two gas stations. If you break someone else's trust, first of all, you got to recognize that it's a problem. And you've got to... You've got to recognize that there's a decent chance that no one should ever trust you again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is, which is, by the way, a class of humans. There's a class of human beings. Trust is not a thing for them. They don't care. Like they're they're gonna, they're gonna. They don't care about it. 
Like everything I just said, they're kind of shrugging their shoulders. Like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. Like, hey, I got to get mine. And right, hey, I, right. you know what I mean? You know, hey, you got to take care of yourself and you got to take care of number one. And, you know, if they don't want to trust me. That's fine. I still got my, you know what I mean? That yeah. There's a whole class of human beings that are like that. One of my direct subordinates, one of my guys that worked for me, he would, he would call me up or pull me aside with some major problem, some issue that was going on. And he'd say, boss, we got this and that and the other thing. And I'd look at him and I'd say, good. When I robbed that jewelry store with, with uh, Marblehead that time, when I was running up the corner, I was looking at grand larceny. You know, I'm looking at theft. I'm looking at a thousand things. I'm looking basically at 12 and a half fucking years or maybe eight years with good behavior. But I'm looking at time. Your ear, my ears were ringing when I was running. A bullet wasn't going to stop me right there. Nothing was going to. I picked up those gold chains from the back of the car, got in that back seat, and we took the fuck off. When I uh, when I got in trouble in Boulder and I kidnapped Vela, when I walked into that house, that was the best adrenaline I ever had in my life. My ears were on fire. I mean, my body was just hot, hot. That's that's a fucking great feeling when you're on fucking fire. And I kicked the door in, and they had like a ceiling, and I just jumped up and pulled it down. With beams hanging, dust everywhere. When I walked out, I had dust all over my face, my shirt. I had ripped that fucking ceiling down. I fucking picked up that coke and I went in the car. You have no idea how I felt. I saw a smash and grab today on uh, on YouTube. It was wild. They just went into this uh, store and started ripping cell phones off the walls. I feel like, and you see, sir, it's just so many years of, of some people getting certain treatments, some people get another treatment, you know, when you start to see that, like, there's just so much of like, um, your politicians just, you know, glad handing with their buddies and giving these contracts, you start to feel like there's not really that American dream. There's not really that thing that can, uh, that everybody's not playing fairly. I think it starts to make people not respect the game anymore, you right. know? But yeah. you still have to sit there at the Monopoly board, but you know that they don't respect the game, and that's when you fucking turn the shoe in and you get that little cannon, and yeah. you just start fucking just hauling ass, bro, just hanging out on Baltic, fucking blowing grams. I could tell it's been years since you played Monopoly. <laughs> yeah. I think it has, Treat man. Treat for a cannon. But it's like, you just, you Baltic's know. Baltic's the hood, by the way. You know, it's a rough neighborhood. It's oh, purple. Baltic was gangster, dude. I would just get Baltic and just stay over there and fucking flex. <laughs> just call people names when they pass through, dude. Oh, hell yeah. Yell shit. Yep. Baltic's good. over there with Mediterranean. It's a lower income area. Did you ever smoke cigarettes? Oh, yeah. Yeah? I used to smoke them, man. One time I got so depressed, I'd been seeing this gal, and she split up with me. Damn. And I smoked probably 33, 34 Newports in a row laying on a... Uh... Futon? No. It's a... Um, <laughs> what's like a floating chair? It has like a little things on the end, kind of. You know what I'm talking about? A floating chair? The one you put in the pool? No, it has like a couple people can sit on it, but it's like a... um. It's like a couple chairs are together, like in a group, and it has like chains. You know what I'm talking about? People put it oh, on the porch. Oh yeah, yeah, swing, yeah, yeah. Port swing, port swing chair. Yeah, 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 yeah. port swing. You just drank, smoked new ports. Try to get over this lady. <sighs> yeah, they just. Yeah, they just. I felt like it was helping my spirit. <laughs> what happened with her? Mm, she caught me running around on her, mm. and I was doing it too. Well, I'm so it's my gonna get upset about that. Yeah, they do, huh? They do. You mentioned Bud Light earlier, and I am with you on that whole thing, and I'm enjoying watching them suffer. I'm not gonna lie. Um, now we've heard we we knew anecdotally that the sales were down. You know, we'd been hearing about distributors struggling. Yet, look at this 
Joe Rogan on the wrong side on this one. Popping open a Bud Light, dismissing the whole controversy. This is the second time he's done this. Watch this. And we're drinking Bud Lights, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, guys. Sorry. We're fucked. There's nothing wrong with it. Mm-mm. Mm. People are so cheer, sir. Cheers, brother. These people are so silly. We were just talking about how silly it is. One person made a really stupid decision. Now everybody's decided that Bud Light is the enemy. Not, not totally getting wrong. it. And most of us wouldn't be caught dead having a Bud Light now for very good reason. It endorses a whole set of values that we do not support. We do not support. We do not support. 